Hi and welcome to the channel and in today's video I'm going to show you how to create a Gantt chart or a project timeline in Word. So firstly I'm going to customize this page so I'm going to go to layout, orientation, click on the drop down and select landscape then go to margins and I'm going to select narrow and that's going to give us as much room on this page as possible and then with my cursor at the top here I'm just going to press the return key which will allow us a little bit of space to put the title then I'm going to go to insert go to table click on the drop down and just simply select one row and two columns now that might seem odd to you but there is a logic to the reason I'm doing this I'm going to firstly customize this row and then I'm just simply going to add more rows to it. It's far easier to customize one row and then duplicate it than it is to create the whole table and then have to make further customizations. So the idea is to have your descriptions, your actions, your lists on the left here, and then here we can create our timeline. Now you may have a timeline of four weeks, you might have to have 31 days for a month, you might have to have longer, but this will allow you to customize it for yourself. So all you need to do is come up with the number of days that you need, click in this cell here, go to layout and go to split cells. And in here, it says number of columns. So for me, I'm just going to do 28 days. So I'm going to put 28 days here and simply click OK. Now Word will then split this into 28 different columns. Now once I've done that, I can simply click anywhere in this row, go to layout and just select insert below and just keep clicking until you have the number of rows that you want. Now something to think about first is how big or small you want your text. Now you might need lots and lots of rows because you've got lots of activities and projects happening or you've only got a few. So if you want to make these rows taller, then just simply select the table, go to layout, go to height. Let's say for example here, we click on one centimeter and press enter. Then you can expand the height of those rows. But for this particular project, I'm just going to go back and start from where we left off. So on the second row down here, I'm going to put in tasks and activities. Now I can center this if I want to, just go up to this icon here, it's in the Layout tab. And then across the top here, I'm going to put in all of my numbers. So this could be the day you start the project. So it might start on the 20th of the month. It might start on the 1st of the month. Just for simplicity reasons, I'm just going to put it in from the 1st of the month and speed up the video. And then here, I'm going to do the days of the week. So I'm just going to put in an S for Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And with this, I'm just going to customize these top two rows. So firstly, I'm going to select them all, go to layout, and I'm going to center everything. And then for these seven letters here, I'm going to go to the home tab. I'm going to click on bold, and then I'm going to click on copy. Then I'm going to select the next seven columns and then press Command and Control V or just click Paste and do that exactly the same again. Or I can go to the end, click Paste and it will go all the way to the end. You can do it whichever way you want. So now I'm just going to extend all of my rows to the bottom because I may not know how many I want. So I'm just going to select the bottom row, go to Layout and I'm just going to keep clicking on the rows until they extend. I'm not going to go quite to the bottom because I know that once I put the text in it's going to make this table bigger and I'll come back to show you how you can make sure it fits on one page and talk about the margins and how you can adjust them. So now I'm just going to put in all of my tasks. Now as you can see I've pasted all of these in and you can see that it's nudged everything down. Now there's a couple of things that you can do to pull this up to a single page or just reduce the space it's taking. So the first thing is to go to the Home tab, go to this icon here and just simply keep reducing the text. Now obviously you don't want it too small because you won't be able to read it. So I've gone down to 7.5 there, that's quite small. But if you need some extra space we can play with the margins. So if we click on the page, 
go over to the rulers. If you can't see the rulers, go to view and just make sure rulers are checked. Now click down here between the white and the gray section. You'll see your cursor changes. Just click and drag that margin down and then go to the top and then do the same at the top. Grab that margin up and you will create some more space on your graph. Now, if you really haven't got enough space, you can drag over these lines here. This is what I meant about creating that first cell first and then customizing everything because this, unfortunately, is what you end up doing. It's just pulling everything over. Now, I'm showing you this because you might make the same mistake. You want, might want to create some extra room, but just keep dragging it over. It can be a little bit laborious, but just keep dragging it over and then I'll show you how to make sure that they're all the same. All these columns are the same width again. And then, you can select all of these columns, go to layout, and then go to this icon here that says distribute columns, and it will just make all of these columns equal. So I'm gonna to go to the top here, I'm gonna see if I can nudge the table down. Yes, I can one. You see we've got an extra cell at the bottom here, so I'm gonna select it, I'm gonna right click, and sorry you can't see it, it just says delete cells, just press delete, press okay, and it will delete that cell, and then I'm simply going to press the return key at the top to push that table down. So now to some customization. I'm going to select the table, go to table design, and I'm going to increase the size of the border around the table and on the inside of some of these columns and rows, just to divide this up a little bit so it just makes a little bit more sense. So here I'm gonna use the drop down. I'm going to go to one and a half points. I'm going to select black. And then on the borders, click on the drop down and I'm going to select outside border. In fact, let's just take that up to two and a quarter. Click on the outside border. There you can see we've got that darker border line. I'm going to do the same by selecting these two rows. And once again, you don't have to click on the drop down again because you can see outside borders are already selected. So I'm going to select that. And then once again, I'm going to select this column here and just click and do exactly the same. So you can see now the way that we've divided this up, so it just makes a little bit more sense. So in the middle here, if you want to, you can select all of these grid lines and you can change the color so it's not quite so obvious. We can change this to maybe a light gray and then we can go to borders and then simply, we'll take this back up to a quarter point and then select inside borders and then you can see they're not quite so obvious. So I'm going to highlight the weekends and I'm gonna select the columns where the weekends lie. You can see Saturday and Sunday. I'm gonna change the shading for those. This is in the table design tab again and I'm gonna change them to this darker gray. And then I might just make this column here dark gray as well. Again, this is all completely up to you. You can change the shading to any of these colors and also you can go down to more colors and select from your color wheel and you can use brighter or darker colors completely up to you. So now we've done that, we can now customize our Gantt chart. So for example, on the first one here, we can select the first three days, go to table design and really this icon here is your friend. Click on the drop down, let's select a color and then that will be your allocated timeline for that task. Now, if you don't want the grid lines in the middle, then just select them all, go to layout and go to merge cells and it will take out the grid lines in the middle for you. So again, go ahead, select the days that you want or the timeline that you want for the various activities, go to table design, go to shading and then select your desired color. And then again, you can just merge those cells if you want to. Now it's also quite interesting with this if you want further customization is if you want to insert some text you can simply type the text in here if you want to and then you can change the color of it, go to the home tab, click on the font color size and click white and you can change the size of this text if you want to there we go, and again, go to layout, and then you can have it so that it's in the middle and over to the left. Alternatively, you can put text against it to the right, 
so you had a lot of text here you can select those cells there you can merge them and then you can simply type some text in here and do exactly the same so I'm just going to go back a couple of steps and I'm just going to fill in this Gantt chart and speed up the video and then I'm going to come back and show you how to put in the titles your logo and it's not going to be a header and footer because I don't think that's applicable for this but you can put some text at the bottom as well to customize it Okay, so once you're happy with the way things have been filled out, you can go ahead and adjust them. And you can see that I've made some adjustments to this, but all you need to do is just simply extend out your timeline and then just go to layout, merge cells. And then if it changes color, simply select it, go to table design, click on the shading and reselect the color again. So it's really easy to customize. So to put in the title, go to insert, text box, draw text box, and click and draw out a text box. Now you can see if I deselect this text box, it has a black borderline and a white background. I'm gonna get rid of both of those by selecting it. Go to shape format, go to this icon here and select no outline. Go to shape fill, click on the drop down and select no fill. And then let's put in our project title. I'm just gonna select this and go to home, make some customizations. I'm gonna select this icon here to make the title a bit bigger. It's gonna reduce the size of this text box. Pop this over to the side here. I'm gonna try and line up the text with the edge of the table using my arrow keys. And then go to copy, deselect, click paste. And then under here, I'm just gonna put the dates. Then I'm just gonna make some customizations and just reduce the size of that text using this icon here. And then again, reduce the size of that text box. And then just move that down a little bit over to the right, just to line that up. Perfect. If you want something at the bottom, select this box here. I like to hold down my Alt and Option key just to quickly copy and paste just the easiest and simplest way to do it. Then double click inside, select everything. And then again, you can reduce the size of that if you want it a little smaller. Okay, I'm just gonna move that down a little bit with my arrow key. Then finally a logo, so go to insert, pictures, click on the drop down, picture from file. Let's just select this logo here and click insert. Now when you do that, everything's gonna go crazy. Don't worry, just keep it selected go to wrap text and select in front of text and simply reduce the size of it and then move it. So now you need to export this. There's several things that you can do. You can go to file. You can simply save it as a word document here. You can go to save as and you can go down to file format and save it as a PDF or you can go to file and save it as a template. What this means is that you can use this template over and over again. And when you go to save it, you have to save it as a new document so you don't disturb the original document. But Word will do that all for you. And you just simply put it in templates here. Make sure the file format here is Word templates. If not, click on the drop down and simply click save. Now you might want to do that before you fill everything out. So you've got a clean template first, and then you can just go in and fill out your tasks, activities, and then the timeline. Completely up to you. If you want a background color on this, go to insert, shapes, click on the square, draw out a rectangle. Just make sure it covers your page. You can go to shape hip fill here. Let's go to gradient again. Let's just select this gradient here. Go to wrap text, go to behind text, go to send backwards and center back. Make sure everything's in front of it. If you find that's too dark, then simply double click on the shape or go over to Format Pane. Go to the bucket icon and fill. You can play with the colors in the gradient. You can go to Solid Fill. You can play with the transparency there, but gray is not, or black is not a good color. And you can play with this transparency slider here. 
let's go to gradient fill let's just change that darker color for something a bit lighter let's take this one out select this one click minus select this one let's go to a lighter color and then as you can see that blends a little better with the overall design now if you want the background to the table to be white then you're going to have to make that white at the very beginning before you start playing around with the colors here because if i select the table now if i go to table design if i go to shading select the color you can see the disaster that is happening so you have to change that color first before you then put in the colors for your graph so I'll just go back one step command or control z and it will resume back to where we were so i hope that's helped you today if it has please like and subscribe and have a great day